This is a first look and review of the newest Tomoa River paper that will probably come out to the general public sometimes in 2022. This new Tomoa River paper is called Tomoa River Successor and it's made by the paper company Sanzen. They've started production on Tomoa River paper and it should be starting to ship out at the end of the month. For clarification purposes, I'd like to do a very short summary on the changes of Tomoa River paper recently. Old Tomoa River paper was made by the company Tomoagawa on machine number seven. And then Tomoagawa moved the production of Tomoa River paper to machine number nine. And that was what everybody called the t new Tomoa River. And that's when they had sent out a bad batch. And so this new Tomoa River paper had some really mixed reviews. And then Tomoagawa sold the Tomoa River paper rights and in inventory to the company Sanzen. And now Sanzen will be making Tomoa River paper. Since the Tomoagawa new Tomoa River paper had only about a year lifespan and also it had such mixed reviews, I'm going to skip that as far as comparison. I'm going to compare the old Tomoa River paper with the successor Tomoa River paper. First, I'm going to evaluate the overall look and feel of the paper along with some extreme ink tests. Here I am spilling about three milliliters of ink on both papers. This is the Tokyo Pen Show ink. On all these clips, I consistently put the successor on the right hand side and the old Tomoa River paper on the left. The old Tomoa River paper just feels softer. In Japan, they do rate the softness of paper. The successor feels harder, crisper, and smoother. The successor is more crinkly and sharper sounding. And here's the old. And strangely, with a flashlight, I found that the fibers in the old paper appeared clumpier than the successor. Here you can see in the successor, the fibers look more even and finer. And also with sunlight, you can see the old paper in the left looks rougher than the more finer fibers on the successor on the right. The successor on the right feels like it's thicker and then consequently a little bit whiter. It also has a bit of a plasticky feel compared to the old paper. Using a syringe, I put two milliliter lines of ink at the top of each paper. And then where you saw the bottle spill, that was about three or four milliliters. This line you see off to the side is because I let the the ink sit for 30 minutes and then I had to kind of carry it over to the sink and dump it out. So I let that pooled up ink sit on both papers for 30 minutes. And both of them passed this test with flying colors. Both of them didn't have any bleed through. Here it's just it leaked over the side and wrapped around, same as over here. And there's some random spots here because it gets messy doing this test. But overall, both of them stayed dry on the other side and there was no bleed through onto the table. This may be useful for artists who use heavy applications of ink. Only a handful of manufacturers have had access to these samples of Sanzen Tomoa River paper. And so you're wondering, how did I get some? Blackmail, pure and simple. Some of you know the paper hunter, who's otherwise known as Jacob from Foodafan. Here are some sightings of that elusive guy. What I didn't know is that he's a member of a greater cabal of paper sneaks that goes from San Francisco to Tokyo to Osaka. I noticed he was acting shifty at the Tokyo International Pen Show and I followed him. He met up with a vendor that's deep into the Japanese paper industry. He curiously asked the guy if there was any good takoyaki restaurants in the area. Takoyaki is like these little octopus pastries. 
And the guy said he didn't know about this area. And then Jacob, very strange, he said, the takoyaki shops around here are short on octopus. A kind of slam against the takoyaki shops around here. So the source was obviously from Osaka. And then I saw this. The gentleman very furtively gave this package to Jacob. I had them. This source was leaking this new paper to the West way before the Japanese news media had gotten a hold of it. So I demanded and got six pieces of this new paper. What I do for my viewers. Next is the writing sample, and in order to compare the each utensil on each type of paper, I would write, say, with a pencil on the old Tomoe River paper and then pencil on the successor paper instead of writing all on one paper and all on the other. I felt like the pencil was darker on the successor paper because somehow it drugged just a little bit and then made it darker. And there really wasn't a lot of smearing on either type of paper. The ballpoint pen was fine on both pieces of paper, except for maybe it was just slightly less smooth on the successor. And the Sharpie just seemed a little bit drier on the successor paper. And surprisingly, the Sharpie had more show through on the successor paper, which is interesting because show through is less on the successor paper for other things. Next is a bunch of dryish kind of chromo shading inks. This Fantan Yen number 22, you can see it pulled up on the end of the parallel and shaded just fine. As many of you know, chromo shading inks tend to be a little bit drier and finicky. They have some problems coming out of the nib sometimes. And I found it to be compounded just a little bit more by the successor paper. It almost felt like the ink was being pulled out of the nib. Foodafan says it's a little bit more textured or feedback, but I think of that as being vibrational, but this felt a little bit more draggy or chalky. And they were both pretty much well the same when it came to chroma shading itself. Like both the pinks and blues came out fine in the Suruga Bay ink. On both papers, this Shinyoku done with a Pilot Parallel had great shading it pulled up on the bottom of the letters and shaded just fine and equally well on both papers and sailor soten is a blue with red sheen and it looked like they both sheened about the same if there was a slight amount of difference maybe on the old tomoa river paper as compared to the new one the sheen was a little more evenly spread on the old one this is just kala dude pigment ink in a marker that I wrote on there and it worked just fine on both papers. I used Pilot Blue Black in a medium fine nib and a fine nib and they both wrote really well and equally smoothly. And in Flex they both wrote just fine and they both felt pretty much well the same and there was an equal amount of flow and equal amount of railroading. I used Edo Ido Limpa, which is a very dry ink, Suruga Bay Summer, which is a very wet ink, Marazen Athena Nehombashi Murasaki, which is a wet ink, Sailor's Sailor, which is a medium wet ink, and the Atramentous Document Blue, which is a permanent ink. Then I just kind of farted around with a pilot parallel on both papers and found it to be pretty much well the same. And this Fantan Yen 22 is a dryish chromo shading ink, and it was pretty much well the same on both papers and both feel and shading. And then I used a Pilot Custom 74 with a soft fine medium nib with Pilot Blue Black for just normal writing, and both papers felt pretty close to the same. I did normal writing with a chromo shading dry ink with a wider nib and it felt more draggier on the successor paper. I don't know what kind of ink was in Jacob's weird pen, but the pen BBS calligraphy nib worked really well on both papers. The real surprise for me is I don't really like the way the Lamy 2000 with the B nib writes. It just feels too slippery or too removed from the paper. But with just the slight amount of feedback here on the successor paper, it really improved the writing experience. And now we're going to do a little bit of a water wash on the ink on both papers and then I'll show it to you later after it's dried. 
These writing samples were all done with glass pen and I found no difference in feel or performance with a glass pen on either paper. Voyager is a Kakimori pigment ink and it worked fine on both. The ink from hell, I think it's an actual iron gall made out of acorns or something, but it smells awful and it doesn't perform real well. I hear it globbed a whole lot, but yet didn't bleed through and it worked just fine. Olive leaf and kelp tea are both chroma shading inks and both a little dry, but in a glass pen they felt the same and they both performed the same, having nice shading and nice color separation. The bean blue is another blue with red sheen and both perform pretty much well the same. Cayenne Gata Doki is a weird ink. It's a brown that has a heavy green mossy sheen to it. And the interesting thing about this ink is when you add water to it, different colors come out. So that's what we'll do here in just a moment. And I use Karan Dash uh, Magnetic Blue and then Aurora 100 Year Anniversary Blue, Sailor Sailor, and again, some more Pilot Blue Black and a very thin glass pen. All of them performed about the same. And as far as bleed through on the back, the successor performed a little bit better. And again, we'll do another uh, water wash here with that Cayenne Gata Doki, and you'll see when it dries out, it separates out into a lot of different colors. And here's the dried out water wash for the Fantan Yen 22 ink. They both look just fine. And when you flip them over, neither one of them bled through to the other side at all. Here's the beautiful Cayenne Gata Doki with its water wash and the different colors that came out. And again, on both of them, they held up fine to the water wash with no bleed through on the back side. Here you can see there's a little bit of show through on both pages, but no actual ink came through to the other side and like say wet the table. I had some interesting results on the dry times. Here you can see I use Pilot Blue Black on a soft fine medium nib for 5, 10, 15, and 20 seconds. I basically make five loops because that's the average length of a word in letters. And then you can see the dry times were pretty much well the same. The slight little bit of differences might just be how long you hold a pen down. So there is basically no difference between the old paper and the successor. Where it got interesting is when I used the Lamy 2000 with Shinyoku, which is a medium wet ink in a B nib. At five seconds, the old paper smeared a lot worse. I mean, the, the successor was the winner. And then even when you look on the 10 second one, it smeared considerably more and more in the 15. And it wasn't until you got to about the 20 to 30 seconds when they smeared about the same. And I had the same kind of results when I used the Tag and Bugukan Kobayashi ink, which is a kind of dry ink. At the five second point, the old paper smeared a lot worse. Don't pay attention to that part there. I kind of made a mistake and had to redo it. But on the old paper, it smeared a lot worse at the beginning, just like the Lamy 2000. And then as you go on further on down, they kind of match each other and it gets back to where about the same dry time. What I'm getting from this is that the successor paper initially sucks the ink out and then like doesn't smear as quickly at the beginning, but then kind of stops and allows the ink to continue pulling so you get the same kind of shading. So in summary, the new Sanzen Tomoa River successor paper actually feels harder, more crinkly, and looks whiter just slightly. It also feels a little bit thicker and more smoother feeling or more almost plasticky feeling. And when you look at it through the light, like a flashlight, it seems to have a finer and more even fiber texture. There's also possibly less show through, especially with normal handwriting. It stands up really well, as well as the old paper and extreme ink tests and water wash and it shades and sheens as well. There's slightly more feedback or dragginess or chalkiness with dry or chroma shading inks, and that's very subtle. 
And also when I talked a little bit about the dry time, they eventually had about the same dry times, but initially the successor paper seemed to like suck up some more ink and the dry time was a little bit better initially. Check out Foodifan's blog on this new Sanzen Tomoe River successor paper. I got a lot of my information from there. And I'll leave the link to that blog post in my show notes. And if you have any questions about the paper, please let me know in the comments. And I'd appreciate a like or a subscribe if you got something out of this video. Thanks.